Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. In Mark chapter 1 and verse 15, the Lord says this. He says, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And that was a message that John the Baptist had given as well. And here the Lord is saying that the kingdom of God is at hand. The time has come for the kingdom of God to be manifested and to take root uh, in that generation. And so here the Lord is telling them, in response to this, you must repent and believe in the gospel or in the good news. Which brings us to the question, what is the kingdom of God? You know, we just finished out the gospel of Matthew and a more familiar term in the gospel of Matthew is the kingdom of heaven. As a matter of fact, the kingdom of God is only mentioned three times. That specific phrase is only used three times in Matthew and all the other times the kingdom of heaven is used. And Matthew is the only one who uses the kingdom of heaven. Once you get past the gospel of Matthew, the kingdom of heaven is no longer used. It's called the kingdom of God. And so some are a little bit confused about what is the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And in all likelihood, these are talking about the same things. Given that it's uh, that the kingdom of heaven is, is a phrase that is really peculiar to Matthew, and the fact that the rest of the New Testament calls it the kingdom of God, uh, seems to indicate that Matthew is speaking about the kingdom of God, but just using the term kingdom of heaven as a synonymous term, perhaps because it would be more palatable to his Jewish audience. But nonetheless, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God was at hand. And this kingdom of God is really the rule of God, the dominion of God, or the royal power of God. Oftentimes when we think of a kingdom, we think of a plot of land uh, that a king rules, or we think about a body of people who the king rules. But this word in the original really has more of the focus on the authority. So when it talks about the kingdom of God, it's talking about the authority of God is at hand. In other words, the authority of God was about to be outpoured on the people, and not only the, the Jewish people, but on all the nations. And God's authority would spread to every type of person in all different regions. And the kingdom of God was going to take root and grow and flourish, uh, starting in that generation. And this really began with Pentecost, when after Jesus had died, was buried, rose again, and then ascended to the right hand of the Father, then the pouring out of the Holy Spirit took place at Pentecost. And that was the beginning of the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Uh, Romans chapter 14 ties the kingdom of God to the Holy Spirit. Uh, there in the context, uh, the Apostle Paul is talking to Christians who were bickering and, and fighting over dietary laws. And this is what he says in response. He says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And, and that's consistent with a lot of the New Testament in which the Holy Spirit, in a sense, becomes what we are led by. In Romans chapter 8, he talked about the fact that as many as are led by the Spirit, these are sons of God. And time and time again, Galatians chapter 5 talks about walking according to the Spirit. Um, that is, the authority of God, the dominion of God, the royal power of God has now been poured out through the Holy Spirit. And now God's authority has been manifested in that way. But there also is a sense in which the kingdom of God is to come in the future. There, in one sense, we already have a taste of the kingdom and we already experienced the kingdom of God, the dominion of God in our lives uh, through the Holy Spirit, through the rule of God, through his word, through the preaching of the gospel and things along those lines. But there's a future sense of the gospel as well. And he says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19, 
Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarned you, just as I have forewarned you, forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So there's a sense in which we've received the kingdom, that the kingdom of God has already been manifested and we already get to participate in the kingdom of God through the operation of the Holy Spirit. But there's a sense in which the future holds uh, a more uh, revelation of the kingdom of God in the sense that we will inherit the kingdom of God. And in all likelihood, it's tied to the resurrection. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we read about a time in which uh, during the resurrection, that uh, the last enemy will be destroyed. Right now, Christ's authority is already manifested through his believers. As they turn their hearts and commit them, their lives to him, his authority and his rule is manifested in our very lives. But they will come when every enemy will be overtaken and Christ's rule will, will reign supremely over all. And it's at that time that Jesus will... Uh, we'll hand over the kingdom to the Father. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says in verse 24, Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to the God and Father. Uh, there the idea of the kingdom of God. It will be truly the kingdom of God when Jesus hands over the kingdom to God and Father. And when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power that is here on this earth. And for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. That last an enemy that will be abolished is death. For he has put all things in subjection under his feet. But, but when he says all things are put in subjection, it is evident that he is accepted who put all things in subjection to him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself also will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him so that God may be all in all. And that'll be the time in which we have the full consummation of the kingdom in the resurrection and the authority, the rule, the, the power of God will be fully manifested as, as his kingdom overtakes uh, the new heavens and the new earth. And we are resurrected to glory and, and to live under his uh, wonderful and precious rule. And so we read about the kingdom of God, we're reading about the rule and the, the dominion of God. And as we mentioned, when we are living lives subjected to the Father, subjected to the Son, subjected to the Holy Spirit, as we're living under the rule of God, already the kingdom of God is being manifested in each and every one of our lives. And that ought to be our desire that we would be totally and absolutely committed to God and to show people what a life under the rule of God really looks like. And when we do that, we are manifesting the kingdom everywhere that we go. And that is really uh, what we should be all about, manifesting the kingdom for the glory of God. And until the day in which the kingdom of heaven will be fully revealed and God's authority and rule will be completely demonstrated in the resurrection. But until that day, we just keep uh, plugging along, walking according to the Spirit, walking under the lead and the guidance of God, showing forth His authority over our lives as we subject to Him, living and according to the law of love, and showing what a wonderful and precious God we serve. And in doing so, uh, more and more people will be drawn to this kingdom and also be brought under the rule of God so that the kingdom of heaven can spread all the more throughout the ends of the earth. And that should be our desire. So with that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.